Welcome to Data Viz Daily. I'm Kevin McGinley. In the last episode, I started a comparison contrast between Oracle Data Visualization and Tableau. And in that episode, I really kind of pointed out how structurally the tools are very similar in terms of how you kind of lay things out and build visualization content. Some slight differences in the interface and how each vendor is sort of chosen to handle certain types of things but ultimately a lot of similarities between the two tools. Um, In this episode, I want to talk about some things that Tableau has or can do that um, Oracle Data Visualization yet can't. And I want to talk about that within two different contexts. First, um, obviously in, in a short 10 to 12 minute video or however long this ends up being, I can't showcase every feature, every capability, that each tool can and can't do. So I'm not gonna necessarily go into every little area. Um, But what I do wanna kind of point out uh, is that there are things that that Tableau can do or the things that I'm gonna point out that Tableau can do are in large part because Tableau as a sort of singular desktop tool is a little bit more of a mature tool than Oracle Data Visualization is. And to illustrate that, to visualize that, I've put together this timeline within Oracle Data Visualization that shows approximately when sort of major releases of each vendor, um, you know, put out over the the sort of history of the two tools. So Tableau goes all the way back to 2005 with their 1.0 release. Um, I think as a company, they go back even further than that, had, you know, betas and whatnot uh, available before the 1.0 release. Um, and has pretty consistently about once a year, maybe slightly different depending on the version and and whatnot, um, has consistently released um, new versions. They're up into their 10 series here, um, which premiered in in 2016, um, where Oracle, you know, really just kind of got started in the data visualization space uh, in 2015, first coming out in their cloud service, Um, going into OBIE itself and data visualization desktop. So, you know, Oracle's got a lot of catching up to do, but what this timeline does show is that they've had some pretty consistent releases um, across the different platforms over the last two years, which shows a a pretty high amount of activity in this space. Um, So while they uh, are definitely a little bit behind and have some catching up to do in that regard, they've been certainly working hard to do that. But what this really highlights, you know, if, if I were to go back and look at version 1.0 of Tableau, you're going to see a very different tool in, in terms of what it can do and, and how many different things it can do and the way it can do it. So what's important to kind of point out here is that, you know, a lot of these things that Tableau can do, it's less about necessarily sort of full feature functionality as it is a more refinement of that functionality. Um, you know, hey, yeah, I can build a certain type of visualization, um, but here is a sort of refinement capability that I would have learned over time users are going to need or potentially want, depending on their level of sophistication. So I wanted to kind of point out this timeline before getting into the, the sort of nitty gritty to, to showcase this. So I'm going to leave presentation mode here, go back to my projects and go back to the world indicators um, data set that we were working with before. And, and you remember in the past episode, I showed this sort of technology tab, which was basically showing, hey, look, here are both tools and sort of the way that they approach building the same kind of thing. But now let's kind of showcase some of the things that Tableau can do, um, because there's a reason that I picked the technology tab as a sort of a way to show some of their similarities. Um, when there are other tabs within this sample workbook that that can point out some other things. So let's first jump to population here. So you're going to notice we've got a map, something that Excel is very, or uh, Tableau is very good at. Um, And in that map, we've got a variety of different metrics going on here. We've got uh, average population. Um, We've got a birth rate bin that we're colorizing the map by. Um, And we're seeing sort of a comparison for a particular year of the countries around the world and sort of how they relate to their from their population size to what their sort of uh, average birth rate is. 
Um, so this is something that you can see pretty easily here. We've got, you know, a caption, we've got the birth rate, we can choose what region we want to look at, um, and then sort of our average population total. Now let's look at the same um, map within Oracle Data Visualization. So Oracle Data Visualization has a mapping capability as well. Um, and, you know, what you're going to see kind of right out of the gate is that, um, you know, we can sort of plot things like birth rate and, and population total, um, but our circles look very much different than what they, they did in Tableau. And I'm going to get the birth rate here in a second um, as, as a way to talk about one of, uh, you know, the, the features that Tableau has that, that Oracle DB doesn't. But let's just talk about these circles first, because what Tableau has um, that allows this map to look a little bit cleaner than the one that we just saw with Oracle is a way to configure the sizes that we have for the um, you know bubbles that appear on each of the countries. So I have this drop down here. It allows me to go into this edit sizes menu. Um, I have a way to sort of have the sizes vary and, and set their sort of range and how I want them to look. Um, and so there's this extra sort of level of configuration within Tableau that if I jump back to Oracle, doesn't exist. If I come up in here into the, the sort of properties of the map, um, there's nothing that allows me to set anything around the sort of, um, you know, how birth rate appears from a circular perspective. So that sort of fine grain control over how those shapes appear on the visualization, Tableau's got that sort of extra level of parameterization or properties menu, if you will, that DB just doesn't have yet. Now, uh, another thing about this that, that I ran into a little bit of a challenge with is the notion of this birth rate. I'm gonna open up the explore menu here. Um, you're gonna see here that the um, birth rate bin is a uh, attribute. It's not a measure. If I jump back to Tableau here, um, you can see it's got text above 3%, 1.5% to 3%, below 1.5%. Um, however, Oracle Data Visualization can't take a text field and drop it into the color of the map shapes or the color of the bubble or the size of the bubble. So we can't actually plot that um, in those particular drop zones. Um, so what I had to do is use a different, uh, you know, sort of convert that to a metric perspective. Um, now, we do have up here a birth rate column that actually has the, the actual rate itself, um, but to create the sort of binning effect, um, I had to create a calculation that did that sort of binning for me. And in this case, I kind of group things between uh, one and three to represent the three different bins that we have. So we have one, two, and three. Now, Oracle Data Visualization still put in the color shading, um, but ultimately, uh, you know, I had to sort of create those bins as a numeric format on my own for it to be able to drop into this drop zone. Now let's jump into the, the next one. Let's look at health. So we'll go ahead and uh, hide this guy here. So you know, here we're looking at um, the uh, percent health of uh, percent GDP by country, and here we have it. You know, per capita health expenditures per capita, um, and you know, so this looks good from the standpoint of you know, sort of a visualization in Oracle DV. I'm filtered on where the percentage rate is higher than 14 percent, and I can see the corresponding. Um, per capita for each of the countries that, that meet that criteria. But over in Tableau, um, if I look at health, you'll see a slightly different visualization going on here. And the reason for that um, is because they have this notion of parameters. Um, so this is an extra feature that Oracle Data Visualization doesn't have. It allows me to uh, put in just sort of a blank field here that allows me to set parameters. Um, I can have uh, colorization above the threshold, below the threshold. Um, and in addition, um, I've got this sort of ability to sort of scroll a chart, um, you know, within that format um, or within that sort of tile window area. If I go back to Oracle Data Visualization and actually take this filter off, 
what you're going to see here is that my uh, you know sort of chart is going to change dramatically. Oracle Data Visualization is going to try to fit um, all of those values within the same space, and I don't have the notion of a sort of scrolling uh, chart here that would allow me to you know see the objects at a more specific um, you know at their individual sort of value level. Um, and in addition, I don't have that sort of notion of a parameter, so I've got to build in to the filter bar the notion of, okay, well, I want everything over 14%, and I can choose to, you know, sort of enable that, disable that, change the value however I want, um, but what I can't necessarily do very easily is sort of uh, conditionally color the bars uh, to, to show the ones that fit within that threshold and the ones that don't. So I can put together a similar looking um, sort of canvas here, or at least getting to the sort of key areas of what I'm trying to see, but I can't make it look exactly the same. Now let's jump over to economy and talk about uh, you know a, a few sort of limitations that were similar within the um, you know some of the other tabs. But what you see here that I have going on is two different charts that look at GDP and GDP per capita by country um, with a sort of spark chart um, per, you know, the at, at a year level so I can see the full sort of scope of the data. If I go over to Tableau and what this looks like, um, come to economy here, you see that uh, they actually kind of have it broken out where it's it's all sort of one visualization, but I've got GDP and GDP per capita um, as the sort of measure names distinguishing the color and, and that sort of breakout. Um, if I come back to Oracle Data Visualization, one of the problems that I'm going to run into that you can see here is I've got this um, you know sort of nifty thing called value labels, which would allow me in a sort of normal circumstances to get that sort of breakdown, um, but unfortunately I can't put it into trellis columns or trellis rows that would allow me to, you know, sort of get that grouping by the, the measure label. So what I had to do instead was actually create two separate visualizations uh, to handle that for me. In addition, I've also filtered specifically here on the companies that we wanted to see because if you look at Tableau, what they're actually doing is they're doing a, a very sophisticated sort where we're looking at the GDP field um, and sorting that in a descending manner. Um, whereas within Oracle Data Visualization, I can't actually get that sorting um, to occur on country. I can sort uh, alphabetically in ascending or descending order, but there is no way to say, hey, sort the countries based on their uh, GDP or GDP per capita value in any way, shape, or form. So I can't get the exact same layout that I was getting over in Tableau. Now, the last thing to sort of point out here um, that I want to point out is this sort of notion of a dashboard. So Tableau does have these uh, dashboard, additional dashboard items that can be built, pushed out to different devices. Here we've got one that's sort of designed for a phone. Here's another one that can be consumed on a number of different devices depending on its layout. Um, but you know these devices or these dashboards build in the combination of prompts and legends and different visualizations. Um, and I can push this out to uh, you know Tableau Server or uh, Tableau Public um, for a user to consume as a web page. Unfortunately, at this point in time. Oracle Data Visualization doesn't really have any kind of similar functionality like that. Now, it does integrate into OBIEE, and so if you are using OBIEE, the idea of being able to um, build dashboards based on the same data set as um, what I have defined over here in Oracle DV is possible. But I actually have to go to a completely different interface, a different tool, build my dashboard. Um, you know, it's it's a very robust dashboarding tool and can do a lot of things, but it is in a completely different development platform compared to uh, Tableau, which is all within the same tool. So that is just a very small snippet of you know how there are some things that are in Tableau that are not in Oracle Data Visualization. 
a lot of that based on the fact that there's just, you know, been lots of refinements over the years of the different releases that have, uh, you know, been made available for Tableau. In the next episode, I'm going to point out some things that Oracle Data Visualization has um, that Tableau doesn't or doesn't have as easily. Um, and so that way we can get a nice sort of, uh, you know, circular effect of, you know, looking at how they're similar, looking how one has advantages over the other, and then come back and, and reverse that thread. So for Data Viz Daily, I'm Kevin McGinley. Thanks for watching.